The hardest thing about functional medicine is actually not getting the diagnosis. You could show up at a doctor and you can pay the money and you can do the diagnostics. The hard thing is then the implementation because behavior change is hard, lifestyle is you know hard, making those kind of changes is hard. And ultimately the best success that we'd seen in functional medicine behavior change was in groups. And there was you know a couple of great examples of that at major medical institutions like the Cleveland Clinic, where they were running these groups and group delivered functional medicine was actually more effective than one-on-one -on -one functional medicine, even though you weren't spending an hour and a half with a doctor. You weren't actually spending a time with the doctor at all. It was run by health coaches and dietitians and physician's assistants. Welcome to Functional Medicine Coaching Moms Podcast, where simplifying healthy lifestyle change for moms is the only goal. We are so excited to speak with James Maskell today. He is an author, speaker, podcaster, community builder, and healthcare entrepreneur, and more importantly, a married father of two girls. This episode is for you if you've been frustrated by conventional medicine and the approach of a pill for every ill. Perhaps you've had chronic disease that hasn't responded well to pharmaceutical treatments and you want to look for other solutions, but don't have the time and also don't know where to start. Both Raquel and I have experienced the frustration of short medical visits where a prescription's handed out and maybe it helps and maybe it doesn't, but nobody seems to really get to the root cause of what's going on. James is an advocate for group medical visits and how they can shift focus to prevention and getting to the root causes of chronic disease. Lifestyle changes can be so hard to make and community and group health coaching make it easier for people. James, we're so excited that you were willing to come on our podcast today. And we're so curious about how you are working to change the way medicine is practiced here in America and around the world. And we were wondering if you could share a little bit about group medical visits, um, because this was something new to us and how that could help both the practitioners and the patients. Yeah, absolutely happy to. So yeah, 18 years into a journey to transform healthcare. Um, that journey has started with working in a clinic that worked with a, a practitioner that where I saw chronic disease being reversed. I had then the opportunity to work with thousands of functional medicine practitioners over the last you know decade. When I started, there weren't that many of these types of doctors around, and now there's one in every city, right? So wherever you are, or even in most you know towns, there's someone who is some sort of this care. So for the listeners, you know there are options now where there really weren't when I started. So that felt like you know part one, which is you got to try and convince doctors that this is a good idea, and then make it easy for their switch. I mean, it's one thing for a doctor to know. When I first came into the industry, I realized there were a lot of doctors that were going, taking the functional medicine training, doing it on their kids, their their family, and their broader family as a hobby, weren't doing it every day for patient care, you know, in, in their day job, we sought to make it easier for doctors to make the switch and, you know, have more sustainable business practices for them. So that's what I did for about a decade. And then sort of came to a realization that while that was necessary do the transformation, it wasn't sufficient. And so I came mm -hmm. to also realize that those doctors, while the value of them, you know, is incredible. Like if you have an autoimmune condition and you reverse it through functional medicine, that is a life changing moment. I literally was just on the phone to someone who their autoimmune disease cost them $2 million over two years from having their situation. And now they're better essentially, and don't need any healthcare wow. because they went through a process. So I just literally on the phone to someone a minute ago about that. So obviously in that situation, wow. it's, it's almost priceless to have that sort of support because you know, that, um, can be the difference between literal, like living with a chronic illness for your whole life or death. And so on, on that mm -hmm. end, but you know, it is expensive for a normal person to mm -hmm. choose this different type of care because it's typically not available on insurance and it's typically out of pocket and people are already spending a lot for healthcare that they end up not using. And that experience for myself. Mm -hmm you know, of, of having health insurance that I didn't use, you know, led me to, um, some of my more recent thinking. And so in 2019, I really took a moment to think about 
how do we get functional medicine or some version of functional medicine to everyone? How does it become the yes. standard of care? Mm -hmm. And uh, that moment, you know, I had spent a lot of time learning about different models and listening to doctors who were innovating. And I just got really obsessed with the group model because I recognized that it did two things. One, it was like efficient enough whereby it didn't, it could work inside the insurance system, right? So groups could be paid for by insurance. Mm -hmm. And so everyone could then have access to them because Medicare and Medicaid could pay for them. And secondly, the hardest thing about functional medicine is actually not getting the diagnosis. You can show up at a doctor and you can pay the money and you can do the diagnostics. The hard thing is then the implementation because behavior change is hard. Lifestyle is, you know, hard. Of Making course. those kind of changes is hard. Mm -hmm. And ultimately the best success that we'd seen in functional medicine behavior change was in groups. And there was, you know, a couple of great examples of that at major medical institutions like the Cleveland Clinic, where they were running these groups and group delivered functional medicine was actually more effective than one-on-one -on -one functional medicine, even though you weren't spending an hour and a half with a doctor, you weren't actually spending a time with the doctor at all. It was run by health coaches and dietitians and physicians assistants. So that just really piqued my interest. And I wrote my second book called The Community Cure, and that really documented all the different places by which functional medicine was being deployed in a group model. And I've, you know, that came out right before COVID. COVID hit, all groups were sort of destroyed. And so I've spent the last three years doing, right. you know, mm -hmm. innovating in, in virtual groups. And now, you know, we have multiple health systems deploying these virtual functional medicine groups to their patients on insurance. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's so true. Functional medicine is, you know, so amazing and you can do all these things in reverse, but it's so much lifestyle factor that's really difficult to implement. So I see where you're saying the group could be so much more effective for people, giving them the community because it's a way of life. It's not just, you know, a quick fix, of course. Correct. Yeah. So that's where we are today. And I'm involved in quite a few different projects that are all trying to work out how to deploy functional medicine at the, to, at the scale that it's needed to solve the problem. And I'm excited to see the progress that we're making. And the world is really like, you know, waking up to this too. I think it's happening in real time. Mm -hmm. The consumers are moving faster than the medical system for obvious reasons. You know, it's quite, it can be kind of caustic for a doctor to be told that they're doing it the wrong way and that there's a much better way to do it. And so that's why doctors sort of come to it one by one. They typically have to have their own personal experience of their child or their wife or some loved one not getting better through the standard of care and then having to like that, giving them the push to start their hero's journey to learn, you know, more about functional medicine and then eventually completing the hero's journey to actually do it every day and help people. So it's a bit slower to move inside health systems, but the consumer understanding of it and, you know, podcasts like this, getting the word out has really allowed almost everyone to at least have the information at their fingertips that there's a better way. And so now it's just about working out ways that it can be deployed so that everyone can have access right. to it. Yeah, connecting. And I think that, you know, such a good point that the consumer asking for it, like the more that they realize like, oh my gosh, this is a thing and this is becoming more available could really uh, kind of decrease like that gap. Is um, Can you share a little bit about, is that Heal Community? Is that, I know you found it Heal Community. Is that the connection of what you were talking about um, with the Community yeah. Cure? Yeah, so Heal Community is a B2B software and coaching company, and we partner with health systems and large clinics to deploy patients into groups of 20. Insurance pays for it. We do it. And so the patient of those clinics or health systems don't necessarily know that Heal Community is doing anything because we're sort of an extension of the care team of the health system. But essentially we're doing functional medicine in groups. I call it functional medicine light because it's really focused on the behavior change and the lifestyle and it's less focused on the like labs and supplements. Understood. How, what would be the best way? Like, I'm just thinking if I was a mom and I was listening to this, I'm feeling really excited right now. And honestly, I actually am a mom listening to this and I am really excited right now about the things that you're saying. How would I, I live in New Jersey, for example, and um, how would I go about 
trying to find like connect with a group like this like if i wanted to get in you know to get this type of healthcare where i would be a part of this group and how would i go about getting involved you know if i'm really honest about it i would say the best thing to do is to just build your own community like you can't really affect the decision making of you know your hospital or maybe you can and if you can give us a call or tell their chief medical officer to give us a call <laughs> but in most cases what i would recommend for mums is just to build their own healthy community right um, you can use online tools mm -hmm to create offline connections. I mean, there's been groups that have been around for a long time, like Ballistic Mums Network or those kind of things where you can meet other mm -hmm. mums that think the same way and, you know, build a community of people that are supporting each other and making healthy choices. Because, you know, one of the things that you come to realize when you're a parent is that most of the things that gather children these days are unhealthy, right? So you know, the food that gets deployed at birthday parties and the activities that kids do that are related to technology and, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you right. know, the, the peers that you surround your kids with are actually going to be like the journey towards what your kids are going to do. I mean, I moved to the countryside. I lived in New York. I lived in LA. I live in the countryside now. And part of the reason I moved here is because of the school and the school, my wife and I agreed that like, a huge priority for us was to be in a community where all the parents in the community reinforced the same values that we wanted in our kids. And that was the most important thing to us. I never thought I would end up living here in the countryside in California, like very rural with chickens and, and solar panels. But like, I recognize that like right. <laughs> raising my daughter in, in LA was already, I could see the warning signs that this was not a good plan. And not that I was probably living in like the functional medicine capital of America in Venice Beach, where you have the most kind mm -hmm. of healthy stuff. But, you know, like ultimately it's in Los Angeles and ultimately, you know, it was not a healthy situation um, for children, in my estimation, even though there's a lot of health food around, right. you know. Uh, so, you know, we made the choice at that point to, you know, to move and to be, you know, around family, like ultimately for us. A key decision was we couldn't really control what the babysitters were saying to our kids and we didn't have any family close and like my business was going well my wife was busy we were using babysitters quite a lot and the first time i heard things come out of my daughter's mouth i was like well where'd you hear that i was like we, we're, you know we're gonna get out of here <laughs> so, you know, so yeah so it's about yes. finding it's about finding that and i think that that is possible everywhere my wife and i were also like ahead of the curve and had kids a bit earlier than people in New York or LA, you know, have. So we had kids when no one else had mm -hmm. kids. And so now to be in a community where, you know, we like the parents, we like the kids, and we know that if we send our daughter to another kid's house, that they're not going to be sitting watching TV. They're not going to be playing video games. They don't have free access to um, the internet. Um, you know, those are like core right. values for us that we built our lives on. I love that. The highlight for me is that health is not just about healthy food. You know, when you just said, yeah, we lived in, you know, LA and they have like all this healthy food, but health is also about your community. And so I love that because I think sometimes people <laughs> miss that point, you know, um, health is also the, how you're thinking, what you're thinking about, et cetera. So, yeah. And I like the idea that we can find resources in our own community. I mean, it is true. Um, the more you start talking to people about it, the more you realize a lot of people do care about this stuff and that, you know, as, as moms, we are definitely, you know, a catalyst for change in all of this, I think. So if we care about this stuff, I think other people are starting to talk about it more, which is great. Um, and so you shared a little bit about your personal journey. Like just how did you, I guess, fall into the realm of functional medicine to begin with? So I had this, I went to work at this clinic. My understand, my goal was to try and work out like whether chronic disease was reversible. And I worked in a clinic where I saw it happen. And then I took a job basically trying to work out like, well, who else does this? Like what, you know, is this just a one-off clinic in Georgia that is reversing chronic disease? How common is this? So I took a job selling to alternative practitioners. So I was 
selling to at the beginning mainly like chiropractors and naturopathic doctors and acupuncturists and a few doctors here and there and you know i guess one of the things that the thing that brought me to functional medicine was i recognized that there were quite a wide range of practitioners of various credentials doing things that could reverse chronic disease but there wasn't really like a common language for those people so like an ayurvedic doctor and a chiropractor and a naturopath speak totally different languages and they're all doing the same thing. They're all improving function, right? But they don't call it and they have their names for it and they can't really communicate. Like they don't really communicate. And that's why you don't see often practitioner teams with those kind of people working together because they're all working inside their own paradigm. And those paradigms are 90% the same, but 10% different. And that lack of coherence, I think is problematic if you care about scale. And so I, right. I went to a conference in 2011. It was the big functional medicine conference in New York. You guys might've been to it, the integrated health symposium. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I saw was Jeff Bland. I'd heard about him and I'd never seen him. And I saw him lecture and a couple of things I noticed straight away, like one, he had the attention of medical doctors and medical doctors were like eating out of his hand. And that was new for me because you know, it was only the few medical doctors at that point that were getting it. I saw a whole room full of them, like wrapped attention and really excited about it. And then I heard Christy Hughes and I saw for the first time the like functional medicine matrix and um, system essentially. And that was when I realized this is the most likely common language for practitioner teams to work around. As an example, you know, one of the seven pillars or one of the seven um, nodes of the matrix is structure and function so structure so my thinking is like does everyone need a chiropractor when is the most useful use of a chiropractor and you know there are obviously enough anecdotes of chiropractic you know solving something more systemic because of the function of the nervous system but like when should it be prioritized as the first thing to do and then you see in functional medicine when a good functional medicine intake is done, and if all of the, the symptoms and signs point towards structures to function, then that's probably a good time to send someone to the chiropractor because it's the priority. That's what I saw functional medicine as a way to like organize and prioritize information. And so then I was just like, okay, this is my theory. Having seen this is that this is the best system for doing that. And then I also realized like in New York at that time where I lived, there wasn't really like a place where functional medicine doctors get together. I was selling to them and I would meet one and I'd say, Hey, tell me about your specialty. And they would tell me what they're doing. And I'd be like, Oh, do you know this other doctor? He's like a mile up the road and he's basically has the same specialty and they had never met always. They had never met. So wow. I started yeah. in 2010 doing little get togethers where I'd have a dinner and invite them all over and have them talk to each other. And I recognized like no one else was doing this. I was doing it. They loved it and it endeared them all to me. And then they would buy my stuff. And that was how the functional forum mm -hmm. started. So the functional forum started in, in 2014. My partner and I came up with it in 2013. And the goal was to have a community in New York city of doctors that were interested in functional medicine, integrated medicine and, and sort of bring people together. And it was just the right thing at the right time. The community was, you know, on point on time, people wanted to have that kind of community. And at that point I'd spent enough time in the industry that I knew who the like cool aspirational doctors were in functional medicine. And I put them on stage and I only gave them 15 minutes, not an hour. And we had Daft Punk intro music and we tried to make it cool to be a functional <laughs> medicine doctor. And that's, yeah, like that. yeah. That's, that was sort of when it all started to take off and it's been a, a, a journey since then, but that was really the first thing that hit. And within a year we had 30,000 doctors watching the show and you know, the biggest conference is only a thousand doctors. So at that point we had sort of like a, a stake in the ground as far as like having an influence on the future of functional medicine. Wow. That is really fantastic. And in alignment with that, we would love, we would love to see uh, functional medicine merge with conventional medicine and you've done all that. Um, how can this happen? How can this continue to happen uh, in bringing those, well, before you mentioned like, Hey, if you know someone in like in a hospital, like, you know, let me know, but 
how you talked about maybe building smaller communities, like that's something that we can do and working together. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the audience that you're speaking to right now is best served by building their own healthy community for themselves and their family. You know, we, through the Functional Forum, we built 400 worldwide communities of practitioners that, you know, get together regularly. We've built a new, you know, we have a technology stack where now we're, you know, building like more permanent communities in, in cities across the country and now across the world where doctors who are interested in this can get together. Um, so like, you know, but, and then, you know, just to give you some context yesterday, I was invited based on, on my second book and someone in a major health system in South Carolina with a million and a half patients and 5 billion in revenue, you know, calling me down there to present to their board about the ideas in my book, because it's obvious that this is what is needed. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Like people are super unhealthy. It's getting worse. Conventional medicine doesn't create healthy humans. And ultimately our systems are waking up to that fact one way or another. And part of it is how they're going to get paid in the future. They realize that there's a whole thing changing where they're not just going to get paid anymore for doing more stuff, they're going to get paid for keeping people healthy, or actually the people in healthcare that are making the most money are getting paid to keep people healthy. And so everyone's realizing that's where, you know, that's where the action is now. And so they don't really know what to do because they've been doing the opposite for 30 years, which is like, just do as many heart stents as possible. And so then then they come to the conclusion (laughs) that they need to do it. And, and ultimately what I'm, trying to do is to create a, an easy way that they could deploy this to everyone. Cause it's not the, for the first time, like hospitals, some hospitals work this out 10 years ago. The problem is it's not like there's 10,000 functional medicine doctors in reserve ready to be deployed at any time, you know? So how do you scale a functional medicine department at a hospital? You really can't because you know, every doctor that's gone functional has their own private practice. They're no way coming back to work for the hospital unless under very, you know, special circumstances. And so you have a demand and supply issue, which I saw five years ago. And that's why I'm focused on the group now. Wow. I see. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And that's inspiring that people are reaching out to you um, and that they're looking for this as a solution because that's what, I mean, Raquel and I, we started this podcast too, to just build community of moms and, and educate people about functional medicine, because there are a lot of people still that are unsure. Like we'll tell them, you know, we're functional medicine coaching moms and they're like, what's functional medicine? So, yeah. so that's part of our goal here um, is to really build community and create change. And we're just curious, um, what do you think two things that moms or people in general could do to advance this? Besides, I guess you already kind of told us about the community building within our own area, but like how, you know, is there anything we could get involved with? I don't even know, like our local government or something to make any change. Like where, where do you think it would start? You know, functional medicine still is in the process, I think, of proving itself, right? So there's, there's some data that's come from places like the okay. Cleveland Clinic. One of the things that I'm working on right now is, to try and deploy software across functional medicine clinics so that they can track the outcomes of every patient and show that this works because, you know, that's critical. Mm. You know, look, I mean, if you have the like wherewithal to like, I mean, there's lots of opportunities. Like I think the pathway that I chose, which was to take a job selling to functional medicine doctors was an incredible journey. One, because I got paid to do something that I loved. I mean, there are definitely people, you know, mums too, who have wanted to go back into the workforce, don't want to do something that they don't feel passionate about and have ended up taking a job like as a sales rep selling to functional medicine doctors where they get to spend time with those people all the time. In some cases, then become a you know, a leader of their community by being the person like I was 10 years ago that brought that community together. So, you know, there are definitely like job opportunities to come and work in the industry. There are obviously some people that feel called if, especially if they've already reversed their chronic condition, they feel called and they might go and become Mm -hmm. a functional medicine health coach so that they could have a short period of time Mm -hmm. whereby that's what we are (laughs) and, and relearn and then go and do that either with a clinic or or solo. So there's, you know, there's, Mm -hmm. there's plenty of opportunity to be involved in the movement without being a doctor or without thinking that you can convince a government that they should do this. Cause the other question is the other question is like, even if you 
met the mayor and the mayor was all in, what's the plan? And, you right. know, the right. best That's functional right. medicine clinics don't need more patients. They have patients up to wazoo, you know, so it's, it's, there's some subtlety that you can only really understand if you've been in it a long time to be like, even if you could convince someone that this was, this was the good idea, then what would you do? And that's, that's been my life, I guess, for the last 10 years, at least, once I really understood what was happening in functional medicine and really understood, you know, the clinics involved and, and the, the organizations and all of their goals and how they get paid and their incentive structures. And that's how we ended up here, I guess. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's you really are, great. Yeah. You're, you're an incredible person. I am so happy to uh, have this time with you and I'm so happy that you exist in the world. Yes. We like, really appreciate it. We need you. It's amazing how much you've done. Like, it's just mind bottling like that you even like had the brain to like figure all this out and it's wonderful. And I feel like like-mindedly like Kristen and I creating this podcast to let people know about functional medicine. Like, you know, sometimes like I didn't know years ago that the feeling that I had that was leading my son to taking this medicine that made him feel like hell was that there were other things. You know, I got him into sports. He was able to channel his energy properly. And there were other things that he was able to do. And I didn't know that. So I so appreciate, um, you know, your dedication to this and all the things that you have figured out. Yeah. Thank you. Really yeah. Well, it's a work in progress. That. You know, I would say, you know, one thing along the way that, that I started that might be a fit for some of the mums to look into. So, you know, when I was living in Brooklyn and I had my first daughter and, or I was about to have my first daughter, you know, we watched this movie called the business of being born, which was a really cool movie on Netflix that Ricky Lake made. And at that moment, just kind of realized like, we want to have a home birth. Like that's the, that's the journey for us. Like we don't want to like participate in the medical industrial complex, especially at such a, like a testing time for mother. So we had a home birth and it was amazing. But the, you know, as I was looking for help, I didn't have health insurance up until that point. And so I started looking at the different options and, you know, we ended up signing up with this um, Christian medical cost sharing entity that like honored your choices and paid for the home birth. And that was an incredible experience. And, and through that journey realized like, you know, when you buy insurance from wherever you buy it embedded in why it's so expensive is because you're kind of paying for everyone else's drugs one way or another, right? If you're not taking drugs and if you keep yourself healthy, you are paying for other people's drugs. And so I wasn't really that excited about that because I just, I wanted my cost of care mm -hmm. to be lower because it's, it would be, it would have to be a pretty strange situation for me to be on a medication, right? I'm not, that's not the way that I choose to like be or live or otherwise. So, you know, I, I would say a thing that you could do is you could disengage from the health system in that sort of way. And 2018, we started a, a business called New Health, K N E W health.com. And um, New Health is an alternative to health insurance. It was the first non medic, is the first like non denominational medical cost sharing entity. And the goal that we had there, that plan was to think about what could healthcare and insurance type products look like if the first thing that you did was health coaching and not the last thing when everything else has gone wrong and hasn't worked. And so, you know, that there, there is, I think there's an opportunity for some, like for people to sort of opt out of what they don't think serves them by making those sort of choices. Yes. So, you know, I'd encourage if you're still using conventional health insurance and maybe use it because mm -hmm. it's part of your plan with your business or part of your husband's plan or whatever. But if you're self-employed and you're making your own decision, those kind of plans end up being significantly less expensive than, than anything else. And also, you know, you're, you're not buying into a, a future prescription drug plan. You're buying into something that will cover the cost if you have some sort of unexpected um, medical issue like breaking your leg or having a birth but is is really there right. to um to do that which is the original purpose of insurance not to avail you of every drug at every moment you know that you might decide to take so that's another thing that i would say is that 
by by sort of opting out of the conventional system, you can you know, you can have an impact at that level. Yeah. I mean, I never thought of it that way, that if I am have my prescription, I mean, my insurance and I'm not using any prescriptions that I'm just paying for other people, I never thought of it that way. So thanks for sharing that because that makes me look at it a little different. Yeah. And what was that? It's called new health, K-N-E-W health.com. So it's like new, sounds new, but it's new with a K. And so you can okay. uh, check that out. There's thousands of members. They share their risk pool with tens of thousands of members and I'm not involved in it day to day because ultimately I really wanted to be in the business of chronic disease reversal at scale. And I didn't want to like spend any time not doing that because I've just been in this for that long that like nothing else is, is exciting enough, but I kind of built this that I would something that I would want for my family. And it turns out that I'm in one of the three states where I can't use it because the ca California's crazy, but New Jersey can and everywhere else can. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. All right. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to look into that. Yeah, that's a good one to look into. And if you'd like to share, I guess, where people can find out more about um, your book or connecting with you. Yeah. So Instagram, Mr. James Maskell, I do some stuff on there. You know, if you want to get the book, it's called The Community Cure, Transforming Health Outcomes Together. Both of my books are actually written for doctors. The goal of my first book was if I put it in the hand of a, of a physician, would they read it, want to start a functional medicine practice and come to us to help them? The goal of the second book was if I put this in the hands of a hospital administrator, would they read it and think we should be doing this and, and bring me in to help them do that? And that's what actually worked two days ago when I was in South Carolina because someone who was on the board mm -hmm. of that hospital read the book somehow and, and paid me to come down and lecture their board on what they should do, which was cool. And the only reason why I think that's starting to happen mm -hmm. now is because, you know, COVID, there were no groups. So that's starting to happen. So yeah. If you, um, you know, check out those books, you can um, get audio and audible, or you can um, get them from Amazon or other places where books are sold and appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, to hear from people who have ideas about how we can move this forward in, in, in their own way. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time today. No we really appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you guys. Yes. Nice to meet you. The information provided in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended for the purpose of diagnosing, curing, treating, or preventing any disease. We are functional medicine certified health coaches and not licensed medical professionals. The opinions and advice of guests are their own and also not considered to be medical advice. Always consult with a healthcare professional when making any healthy lifestyle changes. We would love to hear from our mom community. Any wellness topics that are high on your list, please DM us at Functional Medicine Coaching Moms. We can also be reached via email at info at functionalmedicinecoachingmoms.com. You can find Functional Medicine Coaching Moms podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button.